The shroud is an image to look at. To look at, because only by looking at it do you appreciate the close relationship between the figure of this man and the Christ of the Gospels. This link is that which has driven the devotion of men for many centuries to turn to the shroud and look for traces of Christ's passion in it. The fact that it is to be looked at brings with it the fact that it is to be depicted and reproduced. The shroud will begin to be depicted in a continuous and precise manner from the moment of its arrival in Turin onwards. Before that, we only have sporadic depiction. From that moment on, the fame of the shroud will grow, as will the aim to spread word of the shroud for both catechetic reasons and those concerning the prestige of the Savoy dynasty. As a result, we see the proliferation of images of the shroud. These are images of every type, from printed images to oils to frescoes, the latter being of considerable importance in the history of the shroud's iconography. An important point to make is the positioning of these frescoes. They are rarely found indoors. They are almost always on the facades of houses, above the doors, on the corners of roads. This is because the shroud means protection, an apotropaic valence, in other words, keeping evil at bay, and therefore visible positions such as those above doors well suit this aim. Bene a questo scopo. The shroud has been depicted either on its own or displayed by the Virgin or by angels or displayed by saints. Here too, it is interesting to see that there are different types of saints, those linked to the most popular devotion and everyday life, such as St. Rocco, for example, the protector against pestilence, 
and saints whose relationship with the shroud is a bit more cultured, such as those who had something to do with the story of the shroud, such as St. Charles and St. Francis of Sales, or saints linked in some other way, like St. Francis, the new Christ on earth with the stigmata, or St. Maurice, those of a more dynastic character. Le raffigurazioni della sindone possono essere a grosso modo divise in tre tipi. To a greater extent, the depiction of the shroud can be divided into three types. There are those where the images have a strictly devotional character, those with commemorative images, and those with didactic images, a very important one of which already dates from the 16th century volume of Paleotti, where for the first time the shroud is depicted flanked by letters in order to explain its characteristics within the text. Affiancata da lettere per poterne spiegare all'interno del testo le caratteristiche.
The devotional type of images are of all forms, with a large pre-eminence of frescoes. These frescoes are very interesting, covering a large part of Piedmont and Valle d'Osta, and traces of them can be found even further afield. In Piedmont, they are lacking or rare in certain areas, those that were late in coming under Savoy rule. This also shows the link between the dynasty, its people and the shroud. Obviously, the presence of the shroud in certain areas doesn't prove that the shroud had effectively been in those areas, but rather a widespread devotion at a popular level. Research carried out by Don Tetsuolo has identified about 200 of these frescoes, either still existing or destroyed. These frescoes date from the middle 16th century, let's say the 16th century, and continued until the end of the 19th. Evidently, photography of the shroud then had a decisive influence in substituting manual depiction with that obtained by photograph a more faithful medium that therefore reproduces the object in all its complexity and integrity. Therefore, the iconography of the shroud is an extremely important element in understanding not only the history of the shroud, but also the relationship people have had with this extraordinary object. <laughs> 